<clears throat> All right, well, we're live. This is Hello, Steven everyone. Stutz over here. Sometimes we hang out and sometimes we stream and do all these sorts of fun things. And we were oh, having yeah. such a cool conversation on developing one's vocabulary that we thought that we would uh, bring it on to stream. So, if Steven, if you would be willing to yeah. kind of give your monologue again. Yeah, so... Um, Essentially, as we all, as you know, anyone who tunes into the stream knows or, or watches the VODs, um, you know, I'm involved in tutoring for testing, a standardized tests in particular. And, you know, as such, I have to prep for these tests, right? Yeah, I could probably run in and get a pretty good score. But if you want to tutor for it, your, your work as a tutor goes up when you have a higher score, you know, like someone with a perfect score has, a, you know, more allure to them than someone with a 95th percentile score. Um, it's just that's simply the case. So you can, you want to maximize that. Um, so for the GRE in particular, which is what I'm focusing on now, there are, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say it, I'm not someone with the vocabulary that I should have. There was a time when I was young, when I had a vocabulary that was over twice, you know, like when I was eight, I had the vocabulary of, you know, like a, a you know, 18 plus year old, the, the start reading test would take capped out. Um, and so it obviously like, uh, if that had continued, I, you know, I should have like a, an amazing vocabulary at this point with my life. Well, the thing was I stopped reading books pretty much like almost entirely. Like I just, it was kind of a phase for me almost like reading like i was really into fiction especially and i i just dove into a bunch of books when i was young and i would just like be absorbed and then my interest strayed to different things and and i was never uh, someone who was good at just sitting there and reading nonfiction. like i, I loved the narrative i needed my fe engaged um mm -hmm. and that's just kind of how i was as a person and and, and obviously you know an adhd kid quite so quite social one and active like I was outside doing stuff. I, I wasn't able to, I had poor focus. I wasn't able to just sit there and uh, learn things for the sake of learning. Uh, and and so as such, my vocabulary pretty much just stopped growing. Like, I got, like, in ninth grade, I had the same reading level as I did when I was, you know, when I was eight, which is like, that's a big difference. Um, obviously, I knew more words, but not, not like, a, a lot more words. Not, not a lot. Because um, I... And, and in my exposure, like, the only place I'm getting new words at that point is my parents. Like, my peers are not going to be saying words, new words that I don't understand. There was, I wasn't in an environment that would, like, cultivate, like, that sort of growth, right? So, uh, it's always been, and it's, it's, it's been something, not always, but recently, of course, uh, it's been so, something that I was like, man, like, my, my vocabulary, like, it, like, in doing the GRE, I'm seeing a bunch of words that I had never really seen before. And I'm like, God, like, I just don't know these words. Like, what's what's up? Like, I thought I'm su supposed to just you know, be able to do this. And I'm like, I'm realizing, I'm like, there's nothing for me to figure out even. Like, I can phonetically maybe, uh, not phonetically, but I can maybe break the words into parts and figure out the meaning from that. But, like, other than that, in context, you know, I'm not, like, if it's just a... a, a you a can't solve it word, like a math problem. Yeah, I know. I can't just start. I can't be lazy and go from first principles. I can't. I mean, I suppose you, you know. can. You, you, uh, I mean, but that well, yeah. involves but that involves knowing even more. Yeah, exactly. And and then in certain words have you know like, you know, we have a lot of Latin words obviously in English, but then there's other there's uh, you know lots of influence from everywhere else as well. So you can do that with some words, and then some words you'll see and you're like, well, I'm not going to be able to do like, decipher this. Um, and 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 you know. So, so I'm like, gosh, you know, I'm really far behind, like, and for the jury, there's probably like a thousand words I need to like, you know, have a, a thousand more words I need to know, basically. Um, some of those, obviously, there's some overlap between my, my current vocabulary and those thousand words I need to know, but there's also significant um, parts where, where they, you know, where they don't diverge, you know. Um, so I'm like, okay. Uh, I need to learn a lot of words, and and I kind of—it's one of those things where you have the goal, right? Like, obviously, I need to do this. It's not something like secret to me. I'm quite aware of this, but it's not. It, I'm sure people will relate watching who have like they have a goal, but they really don't know how to start. They don't have a plan set out, and and maybe if your per, if your personality type is like me, like an ENTP, like I'm not a planner, right? I'm just a doer, like spontaneously. That's why I liked math because I, I didn't have to actually learn much. I could just spontaneously 
you know, figure it out from first principles. I didn't have to do much like, you know, there was no rote. There was, there was really no, like very, very little rote, right? And so with, with other subjects, I, I have this like lazy disposition where I, I just, I don't want to go out of my way and like brute force things. I want to kind of finesse my way through the, through the content and figure it out, you know, but with words, obviously you can't just figure it out all the time. So I basically, uh, I, I was sitting there with no plan, right? I'm like, I need to do this. I'm going to do this someday. And then I'll throw it, throw it to a few days. I'm like, oh, I'll do that this week. Oh, this day. But again, I still don't have a plan. So I kind of just procrastinate. Then I, then I don't actually do it the days I said I will. And I'm like, okay, let me see. There's a thousand words I need to know. What, um, like, like I was like, I might as well just do like a lot. Like I've, I've, I was like, cause a thousand, like a thousand for words, like that's a big number, right? Like, or at least pro probably I'm, I'm assuming most people consider that like quite a few le words to learn. It's not just some, something you can just, oh yeah, that's not bad. Like, oh, I'll just sit down there and read the thousand words. Like, no, yeah, learning words, you know, it's, it's a process. And, it, and so I'm like, God, and I'm looking on the internet and they're like, yeah, you know, learn like 20 words a day. I'm like, that'll take 50 days. Like that's. And I, like for me, obviously, in the grand scheme of things, 50 days is not a lot. Like, you know, that's basically, basically a little bit less than two months. But I'm like, God, and I would have to do it every day. Like I'd have to do consistent application and rehearsal. Like that is a, like annoying. Like I'm not someone who's good at like parsing things out over time. Right. I want to do it. I want to do it like now. I want to do it quickly. Um, that's that's been part of my, my struggle with school is that things are by definition spread out like you, you're not just doing it all at once you have to sit there an hour one day then an hour the next day and i hate that right i, I want to do it now like i don't want to delay gratification i want to learn all now and i want to learn the big picture and all that so i'm i'm kind of dread not dreading but i'm like not really not happy about this task and kind of just stagnated like not not doing much and so today i was like oh fuck it you know i'm just gonna like in class i need something to do in class <laughs> I've done a lot of GRE practice tests already, some diagnostic ones, but what's really holding me back here is a vocabulary. Like that's, that's the limiting factor. There's a few areas of math that I'm not, I was, I've never been really introduced to some probability things that are really quite fun to learn that, that I'm figuring out. Um, and I learned that through practice tests and stuff. And, and so I'm, you know, that's something you just learn by doing, but not, uh, and, and so my math knowledge is good. The limiting factor is, this vocabulary that I don't know, like they'll ask you, you know, there will be two blanks and they're like, all right, fill in the two words. And, you know, and I'm like, well, I just, I just don't know what those words mean. Like, or like, I know what one of them means, but like, I don't, you know, who knows? So I'll guess. Um, and sometimes you, I'll know you, what And if you need to know the relationship between words, then obviously knowing their definitions kind of helps. Right, right. And then sometimes I'm like, well, those two words that I do know don't fit in. So this third one probably is the right answer. And so I'll use test taking strategies to get around these and do decent, like, okay. But not great. And depending on the voc the, on the, the verbal test, I would my score would really oscillate quite a bit. Um, um, just between like if depending on the, the the selection of words I was given, and so this is like obviously something that's controlled. I need to okay, just learn the words. Um, and 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 one of the things about this task that makes it kind of not, not well, I guess daunting to me is like. Word, like there's an infinite amount like not an infinite amount it's finite but there's a lot of freaking words like like um in in practice there's like i could say there's an almost an infinite amount of words right like it, it wouldn't you're not going to know all the words of the language and and so i'm like god do i just have to learn like like it, it's it's one of those things you're like well there's so many words they could pull from what the hell like if I'm not exposed to it, I'm just screwed. Like, what if it's just some weird esoteric word? But it turns out with the GB, there's like pretty much a set amount of words you can expect or like would be very, there's a very high likelihood it'll be one of these words. So like very high. So if you learn all these vocab words, you'll be good. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be set for the test so that you're not going to get surprised. And, and, and the, the good thing about these problems is that if you do know all the words, but not, you know, all the words minus one, say you don't know one of them, there's a good chance you can get it right because with you can do process of elimination at that point. So I'm like, okay, so I just sat down today um, and in class and, and, and sometime just on my bed, just went through hundred, like I'm not through the all 150 yet. I'm through about like 125 of them. Cause I, I was like halfway through the, 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 
the third set of 50. Yeah, basically I'm using an app. So there's like, it's like flashcards and there's a thousand words and there's um, 20 sets of 50 words basically. Um, and, and then they have levels. All right, now I'm just doing common words. And then there's, you know, basic, basic words, uh, which I'm assuming just means like not very difficult words, but not necessarily common or rare words. And then there's, you know, the advanced words. Um, so I'm just going through and I, I'm just, okay, I know that word. Oh, I don't know that one, et cetera, et cetera. And just going through and, and it's, and then there's this, within the app, there's mastery, um, learning and, or mastered learning and don't know. So then there's these sections of the vocab. So you, you go through the flashcards and then, if the, you know, you, you click the flashcard to flip it over. And if you understood and knew the definition, generally I'm going to be like, okay, if I actually knew it before looking at the word and not just, oh, yeah, that definition makes sense. Because that's something I'm prone to do. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Like, learning vocab words is not about, like, understand. Like, it's not about, like, oh, that makes sense. Understanding consistency. It's about, like, knowing the word. Not, like, so, so like, something I would it, do It's being able to synthesize a mathematical proof as opposed to looking at the proof and saying that makes sense. Right. Yes. Exactly. Um, and And being able to, you know... In the end, hopefully, apply that word and 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 use it as a part of your active vocabulary. So, you know, I'm going through it. And it's, it's much less like it's actually more fun than I expected. Now, like that I started, it's much it's more interesting. And and I'm I'm like wow, like I I read core after I go through the first list, and there's I'm already seeing those words that were previously I guess I was blind to, but because because when you're reading a lot of times you don't like read every single word right? you read enough to make sense of the sentence so i would go through sentences in the past and not know words but i understand the paragraph and i understand what they're saying and i would just uh, so i wouldn't really integrate that word like my mind's like nope we're not looking at that that's a detail we don't care about it we understand the we understand the big picture this detail doesn't matter this small word um and then and i had been in the habit of like looking up every word i didn't know but then that got like like annoying and then i would have to keep like if you look up word you don't know and okay i now know uh, that's the definition what if i see it again like some other time like what are the chances that i'm just forgot or like i didn't integrate it and then uh, so so like it's annoying to like have you know okay let me look up this word and then let me store it in some folder like some some let me bookmark it so that i can come back later and make sure i know it like that's an annoying process every time you're reading like it's just, uh, flashcards are better than that. So I'm going through flashcards, just learning words uh, in class. And, you know, it's not as bad as I thought. You go over, you, you're you like, okay, that word makes sense. Uh, use I use some association. So, you know, when you see a word, obviously there's root words, there's prefixes, suffixes, stuff like that. They kind of give you, and then there's kind of behaviors of words. Like when it ends in an L, I often an adjective, things like that. Nouns, et cetera, they have these like kind of, predictable ways that they're going about in use depending on which tense it is and stuff and how it's situated within the sentence so i'm finding pretty quickly that wow like these are words that these are pretty useful words and 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 this makes sense and, I, and i'm like learning them and integrating them you know like i'm uh, some of the words i can I, they're already part of my active vocabulary some of them are part of my most most of them are part of my just i recognize that word and, and then there's very, maybe a few, like maybe a handful of words that I, uh, that slip through all of it. And I'm going to have to look at the definition again, but that's why I'm going to go over, over time. I'm going to do a little bit this time, look over them again at a later point after I sleep, wake up, look at them. And that'll, that will, you know, make that memory more, more solid. And sleeping, re and, sleeping really helps. And I found that like one, one thing that helps me quite a bit. They, they talk about the technique called the memory palace. Uh, I naturally kind of do that when I'm like in a location in my head. So like for for the second, for the first vocab list, I was in a, a certain part of my town. Like I was I was just there looking at those words and, and like at, you know, at a certain house there looking at this word and et cetera and having like my understanding kind of integrated into this map. And then the second list, I went near my high school and I was I was kind of like, like from the point of view, looking around my high school and stuff and learning these words. And that helps like making associations helps a lot. Like it, it's like, I'm like, wow, like when I think of the word, I go right back to that location and, and, and now it makes sense. And then now I know it. And it's really possible to go through, I think like, uh, like 150 a day. I'm, I plan, I want to get it done in a week. Um, 
a little bit less than a week. I want to complete all these vocab for the GRE, so I'm ready to take the test. And then I can just, you know, grind out a few errors here and there and, and fix my process so I can, like, really temper it. Because it's a big hole. Like, those few probability problems in math that I didn't really know, and then maybe some graphical, um, like, some streamlining of my process can be done. But, like, those aren't glaring holes. It's kind of, like, niche things that I, that I, I can pick up along the way as I, you know, that I can pick up along the way. Um, so once I get rid of this glaring, kind of glaring hole, it is going to be much better. And my reading comprehension will go up, like, substantially, I, I think, you know. Because some, like, I mean, think about when you're reading, you know, when you're reading a paragraph. Think about how much one word means oftentimes. Like, sometimes one word will tell you, like, so, so much. And reading, I, I view, mm -hmm. is kind of an inductive process. Um, it's, you're reading through the paragraph, um, and, you know, these words are saying certain things, and then these words are saying certain th These, you know, these other words are saying certain things. And you can include a theme from f the amalgamation of, of all these sentences together with all these specific adjectives. You can extrapolate a theme from that, and, and, you, can, and, and you can understand the paragraph better, right? Uh, or or whatever, they're trying, whatever the writer is trying to express, you can, you can understand that better. So this, with, in, with induction, induction as a process is fundamentally it's strengthened by more information right um you know whether it be a scientist having a greater n on their experiment you know more trials more trials let's do more trials or you know for that's what, how, how someone why like almost wisdom i would call an inductive thing um someone who's wise has lived a long time seen many things and has you know been been has processed that and, and has been like attentive to these things and, and, and has stored things in them. So when they come to a new solution, when they come to a new situation or when a situation that arises that they've seen before, they all have good advice regarding that because inductively they can pull from their, 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 their best fund of experience and, you know, give you an answer. So with, in, with inductive processes, that's why older people are wiser, right? Like you don't look at, even the very extremely precocious, like two-year-old, who can you know do calculus or something, they're not they're not super wise. Maybe they could figure something out, but their wisdom it hasn't caught up. They haven't been around enough. Um, so again, see, seeing this as an inductive process, reading, uh, you know, having a, understanding a paragraph and then having a one word that you didn't really understand, and maybe the context is even enough to tell you what it means. That's kind of a whole a blank. Like depending on what that word means. And, you know, writing is potentially quite nuanced. You know, words can, 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 each word can be very important. And if you don't know one word, it can throw off, like, your understanding of the, um, understanding of the passage or whatever you're reading quite substantially, potentially quite substantially. Most of the time, you're probably fine. But, but again, like, so, so this will increase, you know, increasing vocabulary you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a primary process in, in increasing your reading comprehension. Um, and that's something, like, I'll, I'll say people have kind of a set, not really set, but I'll say it's pretty static, like reading abilities. When they learn new words and stuff, how they logically put train, train things together and how they logically understand, like, how they intuitively understand, like, the nuances of language and what each thing means. And, and, and they get so, you know... Two people can read the same pa passage and someone else will get much more information out of it because maybe not because they have some like substantially large vocabulary, but that their actual tool, their fluid, their fluid reasoning ability is just better, basically. Um, and I was always quite good with the fluid part, but then there's there is a discrete aspect of this. There are these words that you need to know. And 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 that can with especially when you have a good when you have good tools, when you have good reading comprehension, learning more words will like is that's like the only thing you need to do to get better. Like you're not going to, you're not going to, you know, analytically get, you know, you're not going to analytically get tempered in some way, unless, I mean, unless you read a whole bunch and you, you know, you'd be very attentive about how you read, but in general, your kind of breeding ability is kind of, it's, it's not, it's not going to move that much. But when you recruit, when you increase your vocabulary, you can read and understand more. And, and reading is like, think about it. It's one of the primary it's definitely one of the primary modes of getting information, right? Um, um, 
uh, like it, it, it just definitely is, right? You know, you can you can hear someone say it to you, or you can see it, or you can read it. And, and obviously, in the, in the age of in the age of the internet, that which of course we're in, you read all the freaking time. You read all the time, um, and and so so expanding your your vocabulary is really like it's something like even if you don't have a big test to study for, like I do, it's something that you should you should probably do. Like you should just probably do. Uh, so it's like a mark of an educated person, and and there's a reason that on 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 IQ tests, um, the most G loaded, so the, the strongest correlated with the general factor of intelligence is vocabulary, um, because um, it, it you know it, it, well, it's it related signifies. to precise expression yes. of ideas. If you're not going to exactly. use the right word for the right situation, then you're not saying what you mean. Right, and exactly. lots of people don't care. What am I actually saying? What I mean? Am I have I picked exactly the right word for this particular circumstance? Or mm -hmm. right. uh, th this word is close enough. Uh, and, yes. and 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 of course, in certain contexts, close enough is good enough. In fact, if yes. you're wanting to become president of the United States, using easy words instead of hard words seems to uh, you get you what right. you want, right? But wh why is that? It's because the majority of the people that are voting yeah don't know use that, easy you know, words. words you mm -hmm. you, you yep. don't say don't know esoteric words the majority most people who vote use easy words yeah yes exactly um and and do you have any idea how unnatural that felt for me to say that yeah, right. You know, it, it, it yeah, exactly. It, it probably did feel quite. I would never. It's, it's like, like the it majority be, of the people, or the majority of voters, one or the other, people who vote voters. I suppose that that that, that would that'd be mm -hmm. doable. I would yeah. think the majority of, of people who vote tend to not have an esoteric vocabulary. Yeah. Whereas most voters use easy words. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's like it just feels. Yes, um, exactly. It, just, it doesn't feel like as descriptive. It doesn't feel as like vibrant. It, it, it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't it, encapsulate exactly. It doesn't. I'm sorry. Okay. It doesn't encapsulate the nuance you intend to have, or yeah. it doesn't. How do, how, how, do, how do you say that in an easy way? It I, doesn't. I, mean, I would even say aesthetically like for me aesthetically it, it's it's just not as appealing as yeah. well it it's just it feels trite it feels just uh, like okay okay so aesthetically appealing trite okay so there are three other words okay so <laughs> you, you, you see what you see what's happening here don't you i mean do, do, i, I know i don't need to spell this out but this is about since we're talking about yeah, yeah i suppose I'm we're in that sense but so the words i use yeah, I suppose we're primed in that yeah. sense, but the fact of the matter is, it, it's th we yeah. we still tend to do this. It's kind right. of our con is kind of our conversations go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and here's and one thing that I used to use are like one thing that like it kind of was an incentive to almost not not it acted as an incentive, but it was an incentive, but it was more of a, a deterrent of me, like, having the motivation to expand my vocabulary was my ability with analogies and my ability to just, to just oh, I don't, you know, I'll just shift the paradigm of uh, paradigm of what I'm saying, and then I can say what I mean without using a precise word. Oh. So, 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 so basically giving word pictures or, or, or somehow. Yeah, right, right. So I convey what I mean, not with a precise word, but with a, a nice little explanation that that holds like is very com still compact like a word by a word by itself is by you know in essence compact right it it, ha it conveys meaning in one in one discrete piece of information but but it's you know a sentence can it can sometimes convey more may, maybe can convey more emotion or something like that but a sentence can also be concise you know analogies are by definition concise yeah, it's like you have you, you you start, and the one word will get you right there. Yep. But then, if you decide, okay, we'll have it. We'll have a sentence here. We'll have mm -hmm. a paragraph here. We'll have the entire structure here. 
you, yep. you you wind up doing an awful lot of nailing on this particular level here. Yep. And yeah. and 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 if you completely nail this level here and you fill it you, you fill it full of darts, people are still going to know what you're talking about, even if you're missing one crucial word. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, I'm yeah. trying to think. There are party games where you where you aren't allowed to say certain words, and people have to guess the word, and people generally do fine with that. Yeah, well, exactly. You can you can work around, and and my ability to work around and just just explain. I didn't have problems with ex explaining my stuff. I didn't have problems with oh, what's the word for that? And I would just what I would just describe it in a different way with a lot of times with analogies. Analogies would be a, a huge thing that I leaned on, and you know. That's all fine and dandy, but that's still going to hurt yourself. Um, even if you can still explain things well without these these words, being able to understand things from your perspective and, and not even from not even from an explanatory perspective, but just you understanding things, um, I, I, there 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 can potentially be a big discrepancy between the two. And this this what happened to me is I was much better at explaining and writing writing on my own. Like I was a much better writer. Than I was a reader, almost, uh, or, or pretty much. I was, uh, I was better at explaining what I meant, and I could, I could use. Uh, I had, I had a decent enough vocabulary that I could basically, I, I could explain anything I, I wanted to that I understood, in a nice, concise way, um, that would, and not in some, you know, really round. It wasn't really roundabout. It was still nice. Um, and then when I would read other writing, I would like, you know, there's times I would just make make mistakes, or I'd have to read closely, or I'd, I'd slow down and. And have to, because because I'm having to like figure out where the how these words fit in. And usually there's there's par again uh, parody whatever. There's usually there's parody between someone's ability to write. I'm, I'm gonna this is this is just an assumption I've made. Um, usually I think there's a parody between someone's ability to write and their ability to read, their ability to express themselves and their ability to understand other people's expressions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think in general you'll see a congruence between those. Uh, it just it just seems, makes sense, right? And then so, sometimes there's um, that. In my case, I could I could write better than I could read. I was able, better at expressing myself than I was at understanding other people's expressions, and 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 that was simply because of a lack of vocabulary. Um, so it's not that you're understanding or you're dumb or that you don't know words. Obviously, there's a difference between smart and educated. Um, but it's you know it's nice to be both right it's nice to ha have some overlap there so so it should be up in anyone's it's, it's in anyone's best interest to to expand vocabulary to to have to not only like temper yourself as a, as a communicator be more precise have, you know but also uh to obviously uh, understand what the hell is going on but when other people say things and and stuff like that and and having a larger pool of information that you can you can pull from and understand when when you're you know approaching new knowledge. So, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's like it's quite simple to under like comprehend, right? That uh, bigger vocabulary, better, like equals better. Like, yes, that's like might be obvious, but people might have thought like exactly like it, it's 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 like, like words are a way of finagling yourself. Um, within abstract structures, right? Like ways of getting yourself around and, and interpreting and, and and you know conveying abstract abstract abstraction just in general, so, and 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 uh, and then coming from that idea, being being more intelligent, being smarter is often is is often commensurate with having better abilities to abstract and better ability. So, like, by knowing more words, you are getting smarter, pretty much. Um, functionally, you're getting smarter. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's just good. Like everyone, everyone wants to be smarter. Um, well, may, okay, I'm not going to say that. Is that so? But, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say that. But uh, it's a common, it's a common thing to want to be smarter, and I don't, and I don't think anyone. Doesn't want to be smarter because they don't want to learn more. They don't want to understand more. It's generally some outside source that's that's saying that's preventing, like, oh god, social repercussions. There's one stuff like that. And then, yeah, oh, that's a big thing I could actually talk about a, a little bit. Like when 
you need to be you need to appraise your audience with with what words you're using and stuff. One thing that that this has happened to me a little bit um, is I get used to talking to people like Matt. I get used to my my highly gifted friends, etc. And and I can just use whatever word I want, and they're going to understand. They're not going to question. Um, and it's it, it won't be normal, right? But then I, if I speak like speak like that, uh, you know, around some normies, let's say, uh, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna go. You know, it might go like, for example, I, I was talking to some people, um, like uh, my roommate and his girlfriend, and I think I said I was I was describing. So if anyone tuned into the stream yesterday, I talked about my physics teacher and how and how he, you know, how I then she did like, how he he kind of stifled me in class, didn't let me say what I wanted, you know, saved his ego for, for the sake of the class, you know, saved his ego in, in, in place of, you know, increasing everyone's understanding. And I was, you know, obviously I hated him. Um, and, and then you made I excuses hate, for I, cheating. I, yes. <laughs> yes. And then I made excuses for cheating. Exactly. Precisely. And, um, point. I'm th I'm th yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was talking about that. I, I was referring, I was referring to that situation, and I was, and then he, after, you know, after the the deed had been done, and everyone had, I wasn't the only one as well, <laughs> but you know, there were More three other people. Excuses, social arts. proof. Anyhow, social proof. <laughs> Either that, it's proof. It's proof of the ingenuity that we, you know, that our class had. We're like, oh. Or, uh, you know, pattern recognition, substitute teacher, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm going off on a tangent there. But anyway, after everyone had, you know, gone over the answers and discussed them and stuff like that, and our whole, like, and, and, and after the, the teacher, someone, someone basically snitched um, that that had happened, you know, he was really, he was, like, upset with us. He was, like, you know, mad. And, you know, he was, he, and then, so he has this nice, um, this nice speech about you know oh, blah, 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 integrity you know, expectations you know what a test means to a teacher and the information that gives a teacher about its class oh should we move on what's what's funny is one of the points was he's like how do i um you know he's like a test is supposed to give feedback about how good how well the students understand information and and so if and so if you know no one understands it we can spend more time on it what's funny about that is that never happens if a bunch of people fail a test they just curb it they don't go back like school is scheduled so that that what he said there was just wrong like no if everyone fails that everyone just fails and then they move on and then it's worse and that's one of sal khan's problems with school basically yeah. and, and ours as yeah. well 100 like, percent mastery just focused on learn your stuff like uh, right it's really hard to mastery um, and 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 oftentimes only only the, the the really clever kids end up like picking up a mastery uh, from and not even from the education they pick up a mastery by going over the topics and understanding them, um, not by the way school conveys it. But anyway, I, I was like, oh my god, he was so he's giving us a speech like the, from this moral high ground that he stands on, talking about all this stuff. Even and, and it burning in my mind is that situation where he you know saved his ego for the sake of class. Like that's just sitting there. So I'm like this. I said sanctimonious. I was like, this guy, is, he's being so damn sanctimonious, right? And the thing is, the way I speak, the way I speak is very, like, I'm, I have I have FE, right? I'm an ENTP. Uh -huh. I, 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 I look at, I naturally appraise my crowd. I naturally am seeing seeing how they are. And I naturally pick up on their speech patterns. So I, with, generally with people my age and, and, and you know, just generally with people my age who I'm not extremely, you know, it's usually not super close to. I have this. I'll pick up their dialect. Like I'll pick up a way of speaking that's very like, "Yo, what up, bro?" You know, like, "Or, oh, goddamn, that's stupid." Like, "Oh, oh, shit, dude." Like stuff like that. Like very, you know. Let's see. Have you have you cut out? Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, but uh, I can't. Uh, Let's see. Hey, your your Looks video like there is was um, some sort of your video is frozen. Let me check. Either that or my Wi Fi is just cracked. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Are you close to a router? Okay.
What is it, Steven? Are you there? Well, it seems like uh, Steven cut out. So, okay, okay you're back. Uh, I'm back. See? Can barely Can you hear me? Uh, well, you were cutting out uh, there pretty oh, badly. There's lots of lag. Mm -hmm. And I still can't see you. Or rather, I, I just see you. You're, you're just... You're just like this. Wait, it's it's okay. I see you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you okay, were just okay. like this. It was that. Okay, now no, I okay. got you. Got you. We're good. You're back. We're good. It's, yes, it's my wife. I'm being bad. But anyway, basically, with the FE that I have, which was what I was talking about, um, I look at people. Um, I, I actually engage with with the people I'm around um, and actually pick up on things from them how they are. Like I, I read them. Right. That's you know, that's ENTP is, you know, part of why they have the tendency to be maybe manipulative or they can spot lies is because they see the the body position changes. They see little things they say. This person says their expression, where the other person is looking. Like we pick up on a lot of information through that. Um, so, so naturally, I don't just speak like some intellectual, like all the time. Like that's, you can't do that with, with other people, but around just general people, my age i pick up like my dialect changes a lot um i i kind of go like it's like yo what up bro like like stuff like that or like oh, god damn dude i don't want to do that that's just stupid like i oh like i'll just you know it's like slang and like you you, 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 you you go and you morph yourself to the situation yeah exactly um and what's what is very often is i do since i do that a lot right like i i have this way of kind of combining those two um, like combining the intellectual speak accidentally with the the very colloquial sort of sort of expressions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I'll be like, I'm mm -hmm. so I was like, so I'm like, uh, so when I was describing that you know that situation with my teacher, I was like, I was like, bro, he was being so damn sanctimonious, like like who says like who says a sentence like that, right? And I saw them like I saw the other people just look at each other like. Like with a smile, like oh, like there, there like, he goes. Who know, man? It's like, yeah. It's, so these are people I know as well, um, <laughs> and I and like, it's me and this. And I was like, oh yeah, there it is. Like they're like okay, but I'm like yeah. So it's, it's phrases like that'll come out or like, you know. So it's just this weird, weird, weird amalgamation of di of different dialects and and words and and <laughs> and it'll. It'll sometimes be a little bit like kind of like what? So yeah, but so it's it's important to use use because one thing it's it's important to do a little bit of both. You know, having an area and having a people you you can speak in an intellectual way with and and practice your vocabulary. Um, and and it's also important maybe not to transfer that like right over to your everyday speech with everyone else. Like no one likes the guy who uses who, you know, has his Facebook status post with all the biggest war words he could find in the thesaurus to, like, appear. You don't you don't want vocabulary for the purpose of appearing smart. You want it, and you know? Yeah, you, you, you want to use an apt word. You want to use yes. a word that fits the circumstance. Yes. But the thing is, even when you do that, people can still go and think that you're trying to, you know... That's true. Uh, Very true. Portray yourself as being smart or whatever and, but, and yeah. that, that, that's a status monkey thing i mean that's that's why caleb beers has this joke that he <laughs> behind him <laughs> is a bookshelf full of books with blank pages because <laughs> oh <my laughs> yeah. he doesn't actually right. know how to read right? so right right and, yeah. and, 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 and that humor, of course, highlights what it is that we've been talking about this whole time. It's It, it has to do with the way that people use words. Right. And words are also kind of like a status symbol. The, the, right. it, it, it's it's oh, like, yeah. okay, what, what, what words are you using? And then if you go and you, you know... You, you, you flash a word that you shouldn't use. Oh, boy. This guy demonstrated that he knows this word. Well, we don't do that in this circle. He's obviously being hoity-toity. He's thinking that mm -hmm. he, he's, he's better than us in some sort of a way, even though, you know, it's just it, it's, I wanted to say what I wanted to say. I, I, I had right. a very particular thing I wanted to say. And, right. and, 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 you know, I don't know if people realize 
that for many people that have a certain set of vocabulary words, it's just that we we default to it. We go to mm-hmm. it. We look at it and we right. see, okay, um, this is the word for the situation. This is the one that comes to my mind. So this is the one I'm going to say. You, exactly. You don't like backtrack. It's not natural to, oh, I'm not going to use that word. It's yeah, to, and, like, and I, I, I tried doing that for a good long while. And I basically wound up being like, okay, this is the 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 set of words that I would like to use. Now let's see if I can find some more simple ones and 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 no, I wound I, up dumbing down my vocabulary a great deal like mm-hmm. like compared to how I would have talked say 13 years ago maybe I uh my vocabulary is 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 a lot more normal yeah right right exactly but um, but 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 still uh, some people don't like it. Sure. I, 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 though I yeah. found, I found that living out of the country is actually a, a, a huge advantage in that r- regard because hardly anyone's a native speaker. Mm-hmm. And right. so, so when they use a word they don't know, they're not surprised. Like, e- oh yeah, I just, exactly. I've never heard. A- and the other, and the other thing is, or because of the kinds of people that I hang out with, they're the kinds of people that if they want to say something, they're going to go look up a word. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, and because, so because very the, precise, right? and, and so they're very precise with their with their with the words that they pick, and so being as precise as they are with the words that they pick, they often wind up using the you know the the, the words nobody else, nobody uses that word, you know all, all the things that people <laughs> might go and complain right. about cool. in, 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 mm-hmm. li- living you know in the Midwest or whatever. Right. And, and they don't know any better because they're just they've just gone and looked up the word that they know fits what it is that they're trying to do. And if they don't yeah. know the word, they'll ask. They'll be like, okay, what is the word that means this particular nuanced idea here? And if there is a single word, I'll tell them. And so they'll mm-hmm. adopt it into their into their vocabulary. And so they wind up speaking more precisely than most native speakers because they're just focused on conveying themselves yeah. and not fitting any particular social norms. Well, right, exactly, and it's awesome. It's awesome because I don't mm-hmm. need to like oh, yeah. have a, have that filter on when talking with foreigners right. because then you know just building a vocabulary becomes part of the conversation as opposed to you know some sort of a weird status monkey crappy thing. Oh yeah, exactly. I don't know a word. Um, Throw poo at the person that does. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, so. And, and, and one of the things with communication, like the point of using certain words is to communicate, right? So you need to I hope keep so. that in mind. You, you need to keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully you're not just talking <laughs> yourself out there. Um, you need to keep in mind when you're talking to people, like if the word is perfect for the situation and nice, like wonderfully precise and just encapsulates it, sometimes it's pointless. It's still pointless because even if, it, if they don't understand it, it's essentially... It, it's 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 equivalent to just throwing a random word in there. Um, it, well, that it just doesn't make sense to them. They're like, oh, depending on the context, especially. Obviously, sometimes you can extrapolate from context, but uh, a lot of times people just be like, oh, I don't know that word. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, and and so you're using that word that actually backfires. Like, you're you're hurting your communication by using a better word. So it's it's this nice, <laughs> this wonderful like situation where you have to like keep in mind who you're with, and you have to. You have to actually be quite quite careful. Um, Hang tight, I need to go eat. turn the temperature down on the chicken. Okay. Specifically the temperature of the chicken. I need to turn it down, not the temperature of the oven in which the chicken is in. <laughs> Precision. Alright, let's see. Yeah, who turns down the temperature of an oven? Nobody does that anymore. No, I just turned down the chicken. Yeah, yeah, chickens have a thermostat. It's like the ch- chickens are turning up. We need to go turn them down. They need yes. To, this party is, needs to stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is horrible. I love it. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to the to the stream. I might close it after. I'm just checking on um, if I'm missing out on chat or something. Nope, nobody's here. Nothing. Okay. Now I'm going to close it because. Oh, yeah, this is a, this is a this is a Monday, or rather Monday night, Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. These are yep. these, these are often Monday and Tuesday streams are often the slowest, but then you wind up having a whole bunch of people that come and watch it later. Like our Sunday stream, right. we wound up having I think twenty nine viewers by the end, and it was like twenty nine views and seven uploads or something, and now we're up to forty one. It's really cool. Right, I changed yeah. the title too. It's round and round the unit circle with Stephen Stutz. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, I did see that. <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, vocabulary is one of those things that, especially you see it in kids, because one thing I want to po uh, point to, or like, you know, kind of illuminate, like, you know how kids kind of, this is especially like important to like quite clever kids, but Kids uh, sometimes, like, when you start out as a baby, like, your sense of, like, there's certain, like, milestones as far as, like, understanding that other people are different than you, right? Like, understanding that, you know, you know, there's the milestone, like, oh, understanding that even when you, when I put my hand in front of my eyeball, it doesn't mean I just have one eye now. And I still, it's just behind it, right? Like, the object permanence, right? Um, so that kind of thing happens. And then, and, but you have a lot of kids who don't realize like, this happens as you age, but generally at a young age, depending on the person, um, you have basically that, like, kids will not recognize that other people experience things differently than them. Mm -hmm. um, and is there a way you can put your mic up a little bit? Because the one you breathe, it, like... Lovely. Yeah. Yes. So, um... <laughs> wonderful but yeah so obviously like you'll see this problem with kids where they don't understand that other people are you know, maybe slightly different than them they react to things differently like uh, pe people are, are are different and you know you can't you have to sometimes tread lightly uh kids don't so like a, a very smart kid will go read their books have these you know big vocab words for their age and, and go just talk to their friends like just normal like they'll just say all the words because they just assume that they know them too and then they're they're left with the blank stares and and mm -hmm. then they don't know what they did wrong and and that, it, like problems can occur like especially like you'll see that in kids so um wh while increasing your vocabulary is quite important and it's something to to definitely do as, as much as you can because it just means better you know it, it a better ability to express yourself a better ability to think um with ab abstractly and with precision mm -hmm. um and it's just it's quite good right so but you also on the other hand need to be, make sure you can appra you're good at appraising the situation and and appraising when to use certain words and, and stuff like that um and and the best thing to do is to practice writing and writing using the words and stuff. And you can write on core and you can say things in however you want. Maybe you'll get a comment that's like, why are you saying it sounds so pompous and arrogant if like you were using all this? Like, <laughs> who cares? That's some comment. Like, practice, you know? Um, practice, answer a question and use use some the words that you want. But that's part, that's some of what I use core for as well. I, I, I try not to like, I don't cut down on the words I'm saying when, I, when, I'm, when I'm writing on core generally. I... I say it as I, I want to say it, and I try to try to practice saying things how exactly you know, saying them precisely how I want to say them with the correct words, structuring the paragraph in the correct way, etc., conveying the idea and 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 as as well as possible um, from my perspective. So that's a good thing to do is just write. Um, obviously, writing is really important. <laughs> uh, we've I, we've talked about this on quite a, like kind of a, a distant stream like quite a while in the past, but we talked about how, how like powerful of a tool it is. Right. And no, no pun intended. Um, and, <laughs> and gosh, I, me seeing, noticing, saying the word right. And then, yeah, that threw off my, completely threw off my train of thought. 
I mean, you get the point. It's, you know, it's good to be able to communicate precisely. It's good to be able to understand, understand that, you know, abstraction in a precise way. It, all around, you know, benefits. You, you, you think better and you, and, you, and you communicate better. So why not do it, right? And there are ways to do it. Like, I, I don't know. I personally am very associative. So I, I've said, you know, I, I do the linking things together and, and linking ideas, or I'm in a location in my head. So I, I have that associated with the words. Um, but, you know, uh, do, what, do what you can. Learn as many as you, you know, as you want to, whatever. But, but I think it's something like, People all, like the the common advice that it's 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 I'm gonna say it, it's the platitudinous advice is oh just read but like sometimes just reading is is not you know is not sufficient to, to really like taking it taking it all in and, and sometimes that's slow and and obviously reading a whole book to learn one word is a slow process um, but but reading is good too like you learn from reading so whatever. Well, yeah. Do what you want. I I was thinking I was thinking along the lines of um, I was thinking along the lines of um, go, going back to what we had originally talked about, or mm -hmm. or kind of or kind of one of the the bigger goals of this channel is is to talk about the true liberal arts, like none of this none, none of the SJW stuff, but the actual liberal arts, right? Yeah. And how how you know they begin with grammar. And logic and rhetoric. Yeah. Right. So, and so basically, you're dealing with 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 words. Uh, the the tri the the the, the, the trivium, the three different ways the ways of grammar, logic, and rhetoric. So, grammar, you wind up having to deal with, you know, the the, the basic rules of of speaking and putting words on paper and 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 or you know carving them in a yep. stone or whatever. Uh, how how to read, how to understand, how to write. Uh, all, all, how to speak, all, all these other different things, and then you wind up having a logic. So how do you go and yeah. and, and and put your ideas together coherently? How do you accomplish that? And how do you go and analyze other people's ideas? And then rhetoric, yeah. which is putting it all together and becoming an effective communicator. And and I, yeah. I would even say that in understanding rhetoric, you can go and become a better listener too. It's not just in what you say. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you need it all. You need the grammar, you need the logic, and you need the rhetoric. If you if if, yeah. if you're missing any one of those, you are not going to be an effective communicator. And yeah. uh, using this as a segue for going into what uh, you know, it, going into the Iliad like we were going to, I, I I'm going to still take one little tangential thing and go as to what the other four are, mm -hmm. because there were seven. Seven liberal arts. Now, sometimes sciences are included in that, but 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 the original seven were grammar and logic and rhetoric. They were the trivium, and, the, and then the quadrivium were um, arithmetic, geometry, arithmetic, arithmetic. Okay. Arith so, so 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 learning about numbers and and, mm -hmm. and 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 how they relate to one another. It's not just you know adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Of course, and that's right. it. Um, yeah, there, there, there was an awful lot more having to do with the, you know numbers, you know, geometry. So you think, okay, what, what's what's what, what's what does that have to do? Well, that's numbers in space. And already you can talk about well, what geometrical space? And and immediately you just go phew, straight into advanced math right there. Yep. Uh, and you go straight from arithmetic into geometry based upon whatever context you happen to be working in. <laughs> then, then. Uh, and people give it in, in different orders, but I'll go and I'll say music and music theory comes next. Yep. Uh, specifically from the theoretical aspect of thinking about numbers in time. So you have numbers in space, the numbers in time. So you 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 then get to think, okay, how how what is it that makes something beautiful? What is it that makes something mm -hmm. good? You you analyze it yeah. on 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 that level, and you see why does this resonate? What's going on? What are the what are the pad patterns we can see here? Why is this? Yeah, and then you you know you have your rhythm, and then you have uh, mm -hmm. intervals. You have all these different things that you go and you combine, and then you figure out okay, this is why why, why a piece of music is good. So we have uh, arithmetic, geometry, music, music theory. Then you have astronomy. All right, so why do they do astronomy? 
because you have celestial bodies moving. So you have space and you have time. So literally it's, 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 uh, the, it goes words, then words in terms of conveying meaning, words in terms of being convincing. That's the first three. Yeah. Then the, then the next four are numbers, numbers in space, numbers in time, and numbers in space and time. Mm -hmm. And basically the idea of getting through the liberal arts education is having mastery of words and numbers. Yeah. Period. Well, and if you... And, and that's almost... Um, and, someone's, and someone's kind of inherent um, fluidity with, with, with dealing with the liberal arts um, is all... Like, that's what intelligence is. Well, pretty, like, they're pretty much like... It's exactly. Like, if you think, if you, if you, if you, you know, if you distill each part, you would okay. Here's the verbal portion. Oh, they're spatial. And, and this is exactly. And that was what that was what I was thinking about as soon as you brought up the whole thing about uh, about G loading. It's like liberal arts, liberal yeah, arts all the way. Just boom. Uh, yeah, just G loaded as half. And 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 I when I think about like obviously just kind of my, with my exposure to tests and stuff like how that stuff gets pulled on and and the questions they sort of ask generally not asking like the questions you'll see in the test aren't super complex mechanically they're not some super arduous process that's like boring and 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 like maybe it really like exacting difficult to to do and like they're not it's generally like these probably try to distill the essence of a concept so okay, how 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 well do you understand how different um, numbers with different signs interact? How well do you understand fractions? What what does what does this like you know? And and very simple problems that give you if you if you understand the like basic principles, will be just easy, really easy to do. Um, and if you don't, it's be hard to figure it out uh, potentially. So. Like it's literally like the liberal arts is what's being, um, that's that's what's being that's what's being appraised your 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 ability with the liberal arts your your uh, you know your skill with that is being like tested on these on these standardized tests. Uh, they want to see hey how good like how how well um how good are they at. at, at dealing with this information but, and th these types of information how well do they understand the basics uh and 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 so obviously the very important things right like this is kind of like when we're looking at a, a, an intellectual perspective at the world the, these are the tools that we use to um you know decipher it and 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 so obviously being better at this better at these things gives you a, a, you know it, it it makes you better at just dealing with the world and understanding it and manipulating it and it gives you more you know power over your steven you cut out uh, steven yeah. you cut out it gives you more power over your um over your environment and and over uh, with other people whether that be physical etc the, the rhetoric part, part especially with other people um and and kind of maybe philosophical or emotional questions you might have that arise that you, you'll you be able to decide, dissect with with a, a good understanding of, of of the three the first three and then of the and then of the last four um that's like almost environmental like how well how well do you like power over your environment how well you understand the environment can you control it what's can you predict what's going to happen etc um exactly. and, and and so all that combined is that's it, it, it's it's easy to see why it's important to be educated um and it's easy to see why these liberal arts are so you know like pretty sacred right like it's it, it's kind of like it, it, it as i understand it has pretty much been unchanging for most of history these these at um, least at like, least in the west and and people even in in earlier civilizations did appreciate that sort of a thing as what made us civilized yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is what separates us from, um, you know, animals. Other other uh, animals. Yeah, animals. Um, it's 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 the distinction is, is our our 
our deafness with with these with these tools you know so mm -hmm. exactly yeah it's important uh to suffice suffice to say it's it's important so what we're going to do next and this will be after a, a brief eight minute intermission is we'll begin with uh, book three of the iliad uh line 372 and we'll just go until such a point as uh makes sense to stop so we'll see you guys yep. at the end of uh at the end of our intermission yep see you
Right, well, All right. we are back. You're back from intermission. Yep. Uh, had a potty break in the ability to talk a, tiny, a teeny bit about the liberal arts. It's interesting that it seems that we Westerners, at least, seem to have um, you know, decided that ability to engage the liberal arts, ability to deal with them, ability to work with them, and so on, is what we've decided to term intelligence. And it's interesting, I think, because uh, Stephen just brought that point up right before intermission um, yeah. uh, was going to end. Uh, the reason I think that it's, it's a very good point to, to, to bring up is that if if we understand okay, so why, why would it be selected for? Why would people care? And why would people care if they weren't good at it? You know, why, why would why would people want to throw poo at intelligent people? And it ultimately has to do with um, you know, being able to understand the liberal arts and being able to have a grasp on what is truly liberal. Uh, it frees your mind. It gives you power. It allows you to get what you want. Mm -hmm. And if there are people that haven't gone and learned these things and don't want to go and do anything and prefer complacency, the idea of having somebody who is free, who has a free mind, who can go and get what he wants or at least go and aim for it and know what way to aim and, and, and so on is a stench to them. It's a horrible, yeah. horrible stench to you to smell someone who's doing well when you can't or won't. And mm -hmm. lots of people, rather than going and trying to apply themselves, will just go and try to minimize or discount whatever it is. You know, yep. I'm trying to think, what's the saying? If if one cannot have something, one must despise it. It's something like that. Yep. Yeah. And, oh, and, yeah. and, and it's a lot easier to despise than it is to go for what you want. One doesn't require oh, yeah. much effort. One requires just running your mouth a little bit. The other requires mm -hmm. concerted effort. Yep. Oh yeah. How well, do you go about dealing with that dissonance? Uh, yeah, it's, it's like your sucks. neighbor. Your your neighbor went and, and did a really big, huge remodeling project that involved knocking down a few walls and putting an entire new wing on his house. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to do it. So what mm -hmm. are you going to say? Well, I didn't want a big wing on a house any yeah. uh, anyway. It's going to be. It's hard to clean big house. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or you know, my, my neighbor got a, a Maserati. My, my neighbor, by the way, didn't get a Maserati. But, but, let's, say, but let, let's say the neighbor got a Maserati. Oh, well, I, you know, fancy cars aren't all they're cracked up to be. Maybe, maybe yeah, not. But, right. but if somebody yeah, can enjoy just, it and derive enjoyment from it, then. Yeah. You know, it's his fancy car. He can have his yeah, fancy it's, car. Yeah, it's. He, it's yeah, it's like, it's, 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 and you know, I'll bet you, if if if, you know, if most people were offered the opportunity, hey, do you want to drive this? If they weren't they afraid would. of completely, if they weren't afraid of totaling it, they would. Like, like if yeah. you could drive it with impunity, be like, oh sure, I'll drive a Maserati. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure, I'll drive a Bentley. Sure. Bond. I'll drive a uh, I'll drive a Rolls. Sure, I'll drive a, a Bugatti. Sure, I'll drive yeah. a, a Koenigsegg. Sure, I'll drive a yeah. you know, whatever yeah. it might be. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 having that power over your environment, and in respect our environment as people. Um, I I feel like there might have been a time um, in human civilization civilization where proficiency with the practical. I'll say, I'll just say they're the practical arts. I don't know. You know, I'll, I'll like as as he was saying, agriculture. Uh, well, he said that on break. Uh, Matt said that on break. Um, basically, outside the liberal arts, we have like practical things like agriculture. Um, I, I'm a, they obviously they're agriculture, all agriculture, engineering, doing things that kind of you know, but but behind the scenes allows society to go forward. You know, allow, right. allows life to go on as usual. You're building your aqueducts. You're building. You're irrigating your fields. You're you know, like putting food on the table. Like and obviously, those, obviously, those are insanely important. If those go by the wayside, civilization is done. Right, but, and they and they obviously pull a little bit, at least, from the liberal arts, at least potentially a lot, and, and with engineering. But in general, um, you can maybe buy it with in practice, while with not having too much of an understanding. 
many other things. So I feel like there might have been a time in, in civilization when, when like that would actually was more important was how well someone can can get by, but uh, get by you know in a practical way. But I'm, I'm eventually well, but you for, hit a for, point, for, for right? the biggest part. And you know, universities is what taught. Uh, university was where you would go and learn liberal arts, right? And if mm -hmm. you went to university, it meant that you were basically well off enough or had gotten the attention of somebody who was well off enough to put you through it. You didn't have to worry about the the other things. You didn't have to worry about where your next meal was going to come from, and that allowed you to do greater thinking. Uh, but here's the thing, right? If, if like, the, the other things are important too, and you better know something about it, otherwise you're going to mm -hmm. be completely hosed. If you're oh, yeah. if, if you're ever in a bad situation and where you don't have safety nets in place, and mm -hmm. because the majority of the wealth of all humanity has been created in the past, well, basically since the early 1800s and so on, well, um, yeah, you, you, you got to know what's going on. But you know, a lot of people weren't able to get to that point because they were too busy living hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. Well, and here's the thing. But what I was what I was saying was that basically there might have been a time in life where you're being you know, like it was how well you how good you are with the practical like especially like the practical arts like so for example someone who who was very strong and could build a, a house because they could they could had strong control over the materials um, and and they they recognize okay if I build it you know in like a, in a conic shape not not an extremely extreme you know not an extremely difficult thing to understand. You know, I can I can put it up or something, mm -hmm. or like you know I can ki I can kill big bigger game of being stronger and having and being better with the sphere like a uh, uh, sphere not the sphere <laughs> with the sphere yeah um it, and it, it has to do with using this to whatever the circumstance happens to be but but, but there comes the point in, in in like civilization where like you're like you know how strong you're as a human like that's limited right like. That you might maybe a strong, a very you know a stronger and more better with their hands person has more control um, in general over their environment, um, and then someone who doesn't. But then there comes a time in, in human where where to get actually better and to have more even more control than that over environment, we have to use the liberal arts to give us innovations and exactly. to, to make and make it easier. And and that becomes just. Uh, you know, like, otherwise and, you'll be and, stuck. Other, if you right. don't have in, if you don't have innovators pushing society forward, like and and and, 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 and and ultimately, you know, people will just follow. It's like people go for what they want. You don't need to have it be like some sort of centralized, you know, right? Uh, and, ma ma mandating, but 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 it, you know, there's the carrot and there's the stick, and the liberal arts are the carrot. This is like look at all you can have. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at all you can have. Mm -hmm. there yeah. we go and then and if you look in our society today most the most um you know the, the most powerful people like you know and then we'll say the richest and and the people who have the most control over their environment like a lot of them are are like you know nerds they're like bill gates you know he was you he's know a he's a very he's very smart guy very smart he's uh, Warren, Warren Buffett said he reads five uh, or recommends reading 500 pages of financial stuff a day if you want to be in finance. Yeah, there you go. Um, it's yeah, so it's stuff like that, um, and people like that who are the, you know, in the forefront and and with the most power. Uh, it's not the strongest one, you know. There's there's the really strong guys, but yeah, thinking but, and then also rhetoric. Rhetoric is important. Rhetoric, I mean, the, the, oh. the, the, the third of the of the of the first three, the third of yep. the trivium. Yeah, and that's why you can get, and that's one thing. Um, you can tell how all, many times you can tell a good deal about how smart someone is by just their writing. There's a reason. Like it gives you a lens into, oh, yeah. like writing samples. You could. That's why they can. It's part of why they can estimate historical figures. You know, IQ. Is because they have writing samples, and they can, and they can, and then of course you know anecdotes and stuff like that. But, but in general, we get a lot for, uh, out of writing. So you know, rhetoric, rhetoric is extremely important. So, 
Speaking of oh, writing, some lag. Speaking of writing, line three hundred seventy-two of the third book of the Iliad, written in blank verse. First Hector and Ulysses, noble chief, measured the ground, then taking lots for proof, who of the combatants should foremost hurl his spear. They shook them in a brazen cask. Meantime the people raised their hands on high, and many a Grecian thus and Trojan prayed. I am back. Jove, father, who on Ida seated, seest, and rulest all below, glorious in power. Of these two champions to the drear abodes, of Aedes him appoint who furnished first, the cause of strife between them, and let peace. Oath bound and amity unite the rest. So spake the hosts, then Hector shook the lots. Majestic chief turning his face aside, forth sprang the lot of Paris, they in ranks, set all where stood the fiery steeds of each, and where his radiant arms lay on the field, illustrious Alexander his bright arms. Put on fair Hale, Helen's paramour he clasped, his polished greaves with silver studs secured, his brother's corselet to his breast he bound, Lysaon's apt to his own shape and size, and slung athwart his shoulders bright embossed, his brazen sword his massy buckler broad. He took and to his graceful head his cask, adjusted elegant, which as he moved, its bushy crest waved dreadful less last he seized, well fitted to his gripe, his ponderous spear. Meantime the hero Menelaus made, like preparation, and his arms put on. When thus from all the multitude apart, both combatants had armed with eyes that flashed. That would be, of course, a Paris and Menelaus. Who were, who were fighting over Helen. When thus from all the multitude apart, both combatants had armed with eyes that flashed, defiance to the middle space they strode. Trojans and Greeks between, astonishment, seized all beholders on the measured ground. Full near they stood, each brandishing on high, his massy spear and each was fiery wrath. First Alexander his long-shadowed spear sent forth and on his smooth shield surface struck. The son of Atreus, but the brazen guard, pierced not for at the disc with blunted point. Reflex his ineffectual weapon stayed. Then Menelaus to the fight advanced, impetuous after prayer offered to Jove. King over all, now grant me to avenge, my wrongs on Alexander now subdue. The aggressor under me that men unborn may shudder at the thought of faith abused, and hospitality with rape repaid, he said, and brandishing his massy spear, dismissed it through the burnished buckler broad of Priam's son the stormy weapon flew, transpierced his costly hauberk and the vest, Ripped on his flank, but with a sideward bend, he baffled it and balked the dreadful death. Then Menelaus, drawing his bright blade, swung it aloft and on the hairy crest, smote him, but shivered into fragments small. The falcon at the stroke fell from his hand. Vexation filled him to the spacious heavens. He looked and with a voice of woe exclaimed, Jupiter of all powers by man adored. To me most averse, confident I hoped. Revenge for Paris's treason, but my sword is shivered, and I sped my spear in vain. So saying, he sprang on him and his long crest, seized fast, then turning, drew him by that hold toward the Grecian host, the broider band, that underbraced his helmet at the chin. Strained to his smooth neck with a ceaseless force, choked him, and now had Menelaus won, 
deathless renown dragging him off the field. But Venus, foam-sprung goddess, feeling quick, his peril imminent, snapped short the brace, though stubborn by a slaughtered ox supplied, and the void helmet followed as he pooled, that prized the hero whirling it aloft, through to his Greeks who caught it and secured, then with vindictive strides he rushed again, on Paris, spear in hand, but him involved, in mist opaque, Venus with ease divine, snatched thence, and in his chamber placed him filled, with sense odorous, spirit soothing sweets, nor stayed the goddess, but at once in quest, of Helen went, her on a lofty tower, she found where many a damsel stood of Troy, and twitched her fragrant robe, in form she seemed, an ancient matron who, while Helen dwelt, in Lacedaemon her unsullied wool, dressed for her faithfulest of all her train. Like her disguised, the goddess thus began. Haste Paris calls thee on his sculptured couch, sparkling alike his looks and his attire. He waits thy wished return thou wouldst not dream. That he had fought he rather seems prepared, for dance, or after dance, for soft repose. So saying, she tumult raised in Helen's mind, yet soon as by her symmetry of neck, by her love-kindling breast and luminous eyes, she knew the goddess her she thus bespake. Ah, whence deceitful deity thy wish, now to ensnare me, wouldst thou lure me, say, to some fair city of Maonian name? A Phrygian more remote from Sparta still. Hast thou some human favorite also there? It is because Atrides hath prevailed to vanquish Paris and would bear me home. Unworthy as I am that thou attemptest again to cheat me, go thyself, sit thou. Beside him, for his sake, renounce the skies, watch him, weep for him, till at length his wife he deigned to make thee or perchance his slave. I go not, now, to go were shame indeed, to dress his couch, nor will I be the jest of all my sex in Ilium. Oh, my griefs are infinite, and more than I can bear. That would be ending at line 487, 372 to 487, unless we want to continue on a little bit further, which actually would kind of make sense. All right. To cool. whom the foam sprung goddess thus incensed, Ah, wretch, provoke not me, lest in my wrath, abandoning thee, I not hate thee less. Then now I fondly love thee, and beget such dis detestation of thee in all hearts, Grecian and Trojan, that thou died abhorred, or that thou die abhorred. Then goddess sees Jove's daughter Helen feared, and in her lucid veil closed wrapped around, silent retired of all those Trojan dames unseen, and Venus led herself the way. Soon then, as Alexander's fair abode, they reached her maidens quick their tasks resumed, and she to her own chamber, lofty roofed, ascended loveliest of her sex a seat, for Helen, daughter of Jove, Aegis armed, to Paris opposite the queen of smiles, herself disposed but with averted eyes, she sat before him and him keen reproached. Thou hast escaped. Ah, would that thou hast died. By that heroic arm mine husband erst. Thou once didst vaunt thee in address and strength. Superior, go then, challenge yet again the warlike Menelaus forth in fight. But hold, the hero of the amber locks, provoke no more rashly, lest the point of his victorious spear soon stretch thee dead. She ended. To whom Paris thus replied, Ah, Helen wound me not with taunt severe. Me, Menelaus, by Minerva's aid, hath vanquished now, who may hear after him. We also have our gods, but let us love, for never since the day when thee I bore, from pleasant Lacedaemon o'er the waves, to Cranky's fair isle, and first enjoyed thy beauty, loved I as I love thee now, 
or felt such sweetness of intense desire. He spake and sought his bed, whom followed soon, Joe's daughter reconciled to his embrace. But Menelaus, like a lion, ranged the multitude inquiring far and near. For Paris lost, yet neither Trojan him nor friend of Troy could show whom else through love. None had concealed for him as death itself, all hated, but his going none has seen. So, Menelaus defeats Paris. Paris, the person who essentially, basically according to the, the way things went, poached the wife of Menelaus, Helen. Lost the fight awesome. and managed to, luckily, you know, by, by will of the gods, so to speak, to escape. He was able to, 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 to rest himself from the grasp of Menelaus after avoiding certain death by spear, by turning at just the right time, and rather than finishing the fight as he had promised, he went back and escaped, which incensed Menelaus, which obviously sets the stage for what is to come. Yes. Well. Wonderful. Reading, just someone reading is just so, like, it, as you said, like, like, peace, it, like, calms me down in the background, like, having, having that, just someone reading. Da -da 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 -da. Interestingly enough, da -da 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 -da. I was, I was going over uh, some GRE, learning new GRE words while you were reading, and I was having a much easier time of it, like, much easier, even though there's noise in the back, like, I was like, okay, that's what this, means. like, I picked up the definition, like I see it once, and then I think about it, and it's, oh, there it is. Then, inter mm -hmm, really interesting. Yeah. It's it's interesting how that works. Yeah. Because we, I mean, we have we have our cerebrum, and 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 our cerebrum is in an interesting way connected to the rest of our brain, right? Mm hmm Is ultimately... Ah. Seemingly someone's driving away. What is? Uh, so... They are. Well, I was hearing a big noise there, but... Anyhow... Yeah, yeah. I'll close my window. Okay. I don't actually need to open at all, so... Just was yeah. So one so so one interesting thing I found is is that there's there are ways of of both hijacking and accentuating what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're learning, how it is that you're going. There it mm -hmm. we are not certainly being cerebral is what differentiates us humans from animals, you know, having reason. Mm -hmm. And when I say being cerebral, I don't mean having a cerebrum, but I mean have, being able to do the kind of reasoning that we do. Right. But still, there are things that are much more base that are part of our nature. And rhythm right. happens to be part of it. You know, yeah. That, 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 we love music. Yeah. My... Um... Yeah, my music teacher always, um, I, I've always loved like music. My parents always played music for me when I was young. My dad introduced me uh, to, you know, various various artists that he, he liked and stuff like that. My mom as well. And I li like, I make beats, for example, like for people, to, like not tech, like just, I make beats because I like to do it. Um, people could rap on them, that they're, they're, that could happen. But it's, it's like that sort of thing. Um, and I used to play piano, but I always like, I, I need some sort of musical at, like facet in my life. Um, and, and my piano teacher said, she said, you have a very, uh, she's like, you have a really good ear for music. And I think it's because I was exposed um, as, at a young age uh, to it. And also, 
the, the, the predisposition thing, like the liberal arts thing. Like, it's part of liberal arts, right? So, you know, if someone's good at reading, they're probably good at, there's a good chance they're good at music, too. And there's a good chance they're good at math and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's that, yeah, it, that or, G. Or, or would be good at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the, the and, interesting and, thing is, is school tends to mess a lot with... Uh, with with people that would actually be good at things because it almost obligates you to do something. things in I'll be right back school almost obligates you to learn in a particular way to learn a particular set of of things and if you don't play by the rules it is considerably more difficult uh, and it's especially horrible if you wind up having some you know your teacher that's explaining something in a way that actually doesn't make sense or in a way that actually doesn't reflect reality and still yeah. somehow you have to go and appease the teacher in order to get through you know you kind of have to pay your dues in that regard and that's at, at least as things currently stand a part of life though i would say that uh, things have the a, a drastic potential to change for the better yeah in in that particular realm what so you when i left you were talking about a teach like a teacher could potentially mess up um yeah. what exactly just uh, mess up your uh well 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 that well, if if you wind up having a teacher that doesn't actually understand what he or she is teaching right. then that then but, but but still, because of being in an authoritative position, because of being there up in front of a classroom, having having to say something, and having mm-hmm. a book, a, a, and having all of the trappings of authority, there right. there you you wind up engaging people on a different level. Like when 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 on a cerebral level, what they say just doesn't make sense. You still have the okay, I'm in charge. This is the way I say it is, and ultimately people people do most people do uh who, who the ones who aren't completely anti-authoritarian will uh-huh. um comply um, not me <laughs> yeah i never yeah. comply but because because most people do comply you run into that in, into that situation where um you just start arbitrarily learning without understanding yeah and then it just it's monkeying at that point a lot of the times exactly it is you you wind up you wind up trying to 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 build a house with no foundation whereas if you if you actually understand things and you and you put the foundation you start from the basic principles of that which can be learned Mm -hmm. and, and, and you work you will it'll it it might take some people a lot longer it might take you think the, the foundation building takes longer oh yeah but once yeah, you have the right sure. foundation you're not going to wind up constantly having that you know it's not going to feel like a house of cards and it's yeah, not going to be that I, one little bit of cognitive dissonance will cause the entire structure to collapse because right, you have the foundation upon which you can a, think a, yeah that's why i subscribe to like a details um last sort of <laughs> mindset not only that i don't like details that also helps but um the fact that, like, once I have the the conceptual structure, uh, like the edifice of what I'm going, of what I'm using to understand, the details just fit in so nicely, right? When you understand something fully, like it, it's just an afterthought. The details come so naturally, so, like it's. I don't. I'm bad at looking and thinking about just the details because I almost never do that. I'm. I never have to tr- try to figure something out mm-hmm. from pure, pure, you know, from the details themselves. Uh, you, if you understand the structure, then you can fit those right into it I think nicely. That has a lot to do with um, your level and, of zoom and flesh those out. Into, it has a lot to do with what the level to which you're zoomed into what it is that you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, because, that's very true because as well. A lot of a lot of the time, the details are very necessary, and if you get oh, a yeah. detail wrong, then it completely changes the the nature of a situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I know this this might be a little bit too 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 basic, but if you have like the difference in between anterior and posterior, mm-hmm. uh, 
Well, that's going to change, like, cranial or caudal, like whatever you might happen to have. The the the. the no, that's that 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 that's a little more general. Well, I don't nuances nuances and meaning, nuances and meaning. So 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 let's say, like you can't you can't go and 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 do surgery without actually knowing exactly where what it is that you're intending to cut is. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's the, the anatomy. Is important, and if you don't have a a standardized vocabulary, if you don't have a certain set of terminology, yeah, you you're going to be it, it's going to be very difficult to learn and to communicate with other people who are doing what you're doing. Medical terminology, nutritional terminology, all those sorts of things are important for for people in the medical field. Uh, the the domain specific vocabulary very very important understanding if if there's a particular quantity associated with a particular word and then mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 you know you you obviously understand how the ideas are connected but yeah if if if, if a number that's one of these quantities is a 10 or a 100 what difference does that make well that right, you know right. and, oh, and ultimately that's like is that 10 to the 8th or 10 to the 9th? Well, that's the difference in between life and death for somebody driving on that bridge, right? Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing. Like, for me, the details are like, they are, they well, they're the finishing touch, right? Mm -hmm. If once, once you have that abstract structure of how it works together in your head, to get the precision that you need to, to re reflect whatever situation you're looking at, the details are necessary. You need those, those are the, the but... And oftentimes the details make a lot of sense. Um, but you know, once you can, it's like okay, well, it makes sense that this number would be this one because these others are this. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm speaking specifically of math there, but you know, oh, you know, why would they? You know, the, this one can't be negative. The area of you know, mm -hmm. the area of uh, it can't can't have negative area, etc. Stuff like that. And um, I've, I've been thinking about helping somebody with organic chemistry, and without a physical chemical background and without going and reading a whole bunch of primary sources organic chemistry is nothing but a house of cards yeah and still people are expected to yeah like like the only way i know how to get through is like the the parts about naming Obviously, you learn those because without that, you yeah. won't be able to discuss a particular compound without drawing the whole thing. So that's yeah. easy. And then, and then, all, all the things that are matters of convention, you just learn. Yeah, uh, you just yeah. But but because you, you're forced to. But then, when it winds up becoming a question of reaction mechanisms or something, um, you're you, you you're stuck going with the best explanation of somebody that's going to try to explain something that is quite complex reduces to a two to twenty minute explanation right and most of it has to do with movement of electrons um, electrophiles and nucleophiles and 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 then the most of organic chemistry reactions winds up being you pick an electrophile and pick a nucleophile and certain things happen mm -hmm. but you don't actually understand the behavior of these electrophiles and nucleophiles until you go to physical uh, chemistry, phys physical chemistry uh, statistical uh, uh, statistical uh, thermodynamics so then, things like that so then pchem should come first I feel, should like come first. I feel like that's generally not what happens though no pchem is pchem is the last course that they give you it's it's almost like they give you this. Okay, this is all that we have observed, right? And then mm -hmm. it's like, and this is what connects it all together. And they finally give you that crown jewel of PCM, your last, you know, right. last year or whatever, or second to last year, what whatever it may be. Yeah, right, it's like right. it's like all this stuff that you've been spending all your time earlier memorizing. This is why it works. And, and, and people kind of expect you to be able to make that leap from concrete to abstract 
rather than starting with the principle. I mean, obviously, yeah, you want to have having people observing things first and wondering why it happens, of course, and needing right. to study. But if the study has already been conducted, I would say you're doing students an incredible disservice. Yeah, right. That makes yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Like yeah, then you know, and and some people, the crux of that is some people really, really hate uh, like the pecan part. Like they hate when they can't just memorize it. I, I you know I I can't imagine just being like having all of my knowledge like be a house of cards. You know, like I just yeah, I, <laughs> like that. I don't know, like multiple houses of cards. Like I could not deal with that. Like that just. I feel like I'd just be hapless. I would end up learning nothing, even though I spent a whole bunch of time in a class. And that's, I think, what happens. My, at least my intuition says so. People end up not knowing anything. And that's how on standardized tests, they can ask simple questions that talk about the essence of what's going on. And people just get them wrong. And, 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 and you're like, well, you've spent time but, in that but class. But if there's this spent- really intricate thing of, okay, solve this problem. It's like, yeah, well, I, I know it. the formula for that. I'm going to use the formula for that, and I can go and put like that into the formula, and then you the formula, and there's the answer. That's C. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, right. It's it's like, well, who's on? You know, a computer could just do it. You know, computer could easily just plug and chug, right? Um, well, maybe a computer can do some other things as well, but. Uh, that's like essentially what you're you're becoming at that point in my mind like you're just becoming you're like a fax machine you're just copying it you know and sending it somewhere else you're, um and you're not doing it nearly as fast as an actual like computer or something like that would um and so yeah it's just bad and they come out knowing nothing because you can't if you have nothing you know just to, to connect ideas to and no understanding like you won't you won't have any like associations of like what, what like what's going on. You see it like you know a year a year goes by and you're going to come back to that same material, and nothing will be there. You will have no retention, um, and that's what happens. And that's why, like, and here's what I this is what I've heard. I've heard like pretty smart smart people be like, well, standardized tests are just easy. They it's just simple questions. Like they're easy. Well, that's the thing is they're not ne- not necessarily because not, not if you not if all everyone, you've done is memorize. Yeah, if all you've done is memorize and, and, you know, just studiously, you know, muggied the, the teacher's, pr- you know, methods that they use for each problem and just, okay, I see this, I do this. I see this, I do this. I see this, I do this. Plug in here. Plug this in. Blah, Go, blah, going do that. back to the concept of organic chemistry, uh, Gust says, rote memorization is a sort of impediment to extrapolation and conceptual synth- uh, synthesization. I I mostly agree with that. There is one situation that I've found can, uh, where, where rote memorization can help. Uh, you can go and ask the why questions. Like, one thing, one thing I found is like lots of people that want to know why um, seek out the why at an inappropriate time and place within an appro- with inappropriate company. Happened to me. It had, that's happened to me. Exactly. It's 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 like. And and I've my my dad's like no just um he he says uh he's like just delay gratification he's like just just trust now just do do this stuff now and then it, you know it is like the delaying that that like understanding. Because you don't have the tools to understand the why yet. Or, yet. or you may have the tools to understand the why, but but the rote memorization helps develop a certain amount of context. So so well, yeah. so, so I, I'm going to st- I'm 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 not going to say that the way that organic chemistry is taught is appropriate because I would say that it should be taught after physical chemistry. But 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 in and of itself, if you take if you just take that element completely out of it out of the context that it should be. I'm perfectly okay with them teaching it the way that they do, due to the fact that you can go and 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 be like, okay. There, there, there's this there's this there's this idea of, of of pushing electrons. It's a little overly simplified, 
but for all intents and purposes it does what you need to get you, what you need to do in terms of understanding how different organic compounds interact and react uh, one with another or with inorganic mm -hmm. compounds or whatever uh, right. you, you, you follow the electrons and there's in fact a lovely book I don't get any kind of um, compensation for, for, for suggesting it but there's a lovely book called Pushing Electrons. It's a it's just a workbook. And if you go through that, and I would recommend like taking you know, taking personal copies of the pages and then working through it so you can work through the exercise more than, exercises more than once. But if you get through that book, you will have an idea or at least what will what I think will wind up happening is you'll start recognizing patterns you'll recognize patterns of what actually tends to occur and even though you might not necessarily have the why I mean we don't have the why in psychology either because we don't have mm -hmm. a brain I mean not everybody's walking around with a brain scanner that, that mm -hmm. you can just go and see the output All right hello Matthew uh, not everyone's walking around with a uh, brain scanner where you can see the output, so you still wind up having to deal with this pattern recognition thing. It's just that when it's with something that's much more tangible and understandable, like a hard science, it's an awful lot easier to get down to the basic truth than it is if it's something so far removed from first principles that you have to go and somehow invent this other set of more advanced first principles that's subject to change. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest doing for anybody that does want to, for instance, learn organic chemistry is go through uh, all the naming conventions and the terminology first. Then go through pushing of electrons. So, and, and, and after doing that, and after attempting to see the patterns which are very basic in nature. They're, they're, they're basic patterns. There's nothing inherently difficult about them aside from just sitting down and memorizing them. You can then go and have your physical, uh, physical chemistry textbook in hand or whatever. Or you can go and have the Journal of Organic Chemistry in hand in the, con in the context of, of, you know, you have, you have a textbook, you have the, your journal. And then you can go and, and, and attempt to synthesize a, a stronger, more robust body of knowledge around the circumstance. And it works. It actually does work. But it requires, as you said your dad brought up, you know, trusting that, 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 that you'll get to what you need to get to mm -hmm. in the end. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I um, mean, that, that, when I first encountered calculus, um, well, not, I, I can't. Technically, my dad had asked me a question when I was really young, but you know that I'm saying like my first class experience um, in calculus, I was like, "This is just boring." I was like, "These just like it makes sense, but like these are just like you know the, the you know." I was like, "These ideas are simplistic." Like, it, and and we're, I'm just like learning like all oh, like Riemann sums. Like, oh, I'm just God. I'm just monkeying a method. Like, I understand why that works and stuff, but. Like, this is just, like, boring. Like, I, I was, like, very, like, disenthused with just, I was like, is this what this stuff is? Like, algebra was so much more, like, like, I felt like, I, I felt like I had much more leeway with what I could do. I had much more, like, tricks up my sleeve. And, and but, but then my dad's like, well, you're just learning a tool at this point. And this is the very basics. Like, you're not going to be able to do any cool tricks and cool, um, you know, or interesting, you won't have, you know, any in, maybe interesting insights um into it until you get farther along like it, you know you're not going to have you know until you understand how it fits into the the bigger picture and you won't get that right away like that's something that you have to delay and you know i you know <laughs> i mean i guess i believed him but i didn't really show that belief in in my practice because you know i didn't really care about the class at all um but you know i came around eventually and and yeah you know you do sometimes have to do that where you where you delay d delay the gratification you know before you learn you know before you can understand shakespeare you have to learn you know a b c d e f you have to learn the alphabet uh, you can't get around that um so yeah um it's <laughs> sometimes hard to do though i'll say that 
I, I think that learning to delay instant gratification is another one of those meta skills that um, we may have in many aspects lost with modernity. Yeah, oh yeah. It is one of those skills, if not lost, just really, really, like it's it's been it's been affected like heavily, and it's it's much more difficult for us to do than than maybe our predecessors. That's what was the case for me was I was used to instant understanding. I was used to basically instantly seeing the shortcut, distilling the essence of what's going on, and um, you know, basically just I, I was just used to that. That's just how things had to be. Mm -hmm. um, Craving for stimulus. And, yeah, yeah. I wanted the stimulus. I wanted that understanding. It was fun. Um, you know, it was satisfying. It's in an, you know, in an aesthetic way, it's satisfying to see how everything works together. And it's just sat, you know, cathartic. Um, I had to delay that, I, you know, what wasn't just going to get that. And, and I still derive. And what I've noticed is I have, you know, I, sometimes my understanding is not as, as deep as there's times where I've shortcut understanding with, by just having good understanding of, um, or, or a good, I'm used to saying understanding too much, but there's times that I've shortcut understanding by having good, um, by having you know good execution of the problem. Like, I like I, I'm very I'm quite good at applying the method that they use, um, and that's rarer. That's rare because usually I have to understand it to get the method. But sometimes you know, it's easy to tell like this type of problem does this, and so I'm I'm going to do this without actually thinking about it. Um, and then I think about it and I get that understanding and that's a fun process. It's fun looking at a simple problem and just going back and just shooting back to the first principle to have just getting that deep, you know, that deep understanding of what's going on. Um, you know, going all the way back to just very simple things, sorting it, you know, watching, you know, watching the trail all the way down the rabbit hole, so to speak. Um, you know, that, that sort of understanding is really satisfying and, and like, I I promise if you if you go back and do math that you have kind of not done for a while, um, you'll see things that you didn't see before, Get and a you'll fresh have perspective. Yeah, and you'll have you'll link you'll make connections that you didn't before, and then you'll have deep un, deeper understanding that you might not have before. Um, and it's satisfying. All right, what's going on in chat? Let's see. Every time someone brings up IQ, then races, species, subspecies, and breeds comes to mind. Yeah. But we cannot deny that it plays a large part in certain groups are on average. You must have. Okay, I have. Yeah, I'm probably. But I'm still a little skeptical about it. Well, you not see, not, exactly. But none of that necessitates a response. And so it's like, it's like yeah. what, what do you say to that? What can I? It's like, it's like yeah, I, I don't think that we're denying any um we're not denying any scientifically observable facts here on stream or i don't think we're gust. denying any empirical observations no nope. what gust said is um correct i think um so but, but so yeah but not but there there are other I, I can understand that there would be emotional implications and, 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 you know, people wanting to, you know, clamor for status that will be quick to jump on anything without even subjecting it to scrutiny. Yep. Like, th th this contained this buzzword, therefore I get angry without even thinking about what the what, what, what the content is i think you know that that's ultimately what people say well that person got triggered uh that that person um or or or, or this situation was a trigger for that person or whatever it may be mm -hmm. um that, that that somehow you bypass the critical factor and this the person just has the uh, dramatic emotional response to whatever the subject happens to be and then blows whatever response it would be out of proportion or responds to something that is actually different than what's being said um
No, no, no. Why? Eh. Well, statistics aren't. That's that's one thing. You know, statistics aren't. They're not emotionally loaded by themselves. <laughs> they're they're simply it's simply data, right? Um, so anyone trying to maybe prove a moral point with statistics, I think um, I think that usually is a, a bad idea. To, or, or just, to, to or prove? I, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's kind of difficult to say because you can't derive oughts from is. You cannot right. derive, an, derive an ought from an is. Yeah, but, but, exactly. That's what I mean. But, yeah, when so, you try so, to do so, that, so, it's so bad. So you wind up having all these... But, but people do that all the time. Oh, yeah, they do, like, yes. Like, like, I, like I did, did this whole idea of IQ and racial super supremacy it's about fitness it is about fitness to a particular environment and it always has been yeah it's yeah exactly it's simply like uh, you know there all there's the trend right you know as as someone the more polar the climate right the higher the iq because but it's that's simply well, but it's, it's also not, that's it's, that's that's instant versus delayed gratification as well yeah that's not yeah that's not you know it's that's not saying oh you know winter's it's, coming it's, right exactly it's it's those populations have to they need their, their environment their environmental control is by very nature by its very nature it's harder for them to control their environment it's they need to be more careful around their environment they need so traits you know traits that you know affect environmental control in that sort of way like you get selected for because you know, and if you if I don't stay if I don't pack food for the winter, I'm dead. I'm gonna die. So and if, if you, someone doesn't have that, and if you live yeah. in equatorial places where there is you know a general supply of food around, I mean maybe not the most abundant supply around, but 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 mm -hmm. uh, but naturally you can find food year round. Then of course that's going to uh, cause people that don't necessarily plan for the future. And who can can immediately go and spot an opportunity and just grab it, instant gratification to mm -hmm. to um to flourish. Now, of course, you wind up having people like if if there is a good opportunity anywhere, you might need to go and assess for a threat. But but still, mm -hmm. you know, low hanging fruit, you go for it. But but right. but the but the different environments and being subject to them for millennia can certainly impact people but that doesn't yeah that doesn't mean that any person is is inherently superior or inferior to any other no. person a, 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 especially not from a moral sense but if you're talking about yeah, a fitness well, yeah. sense a like, fitness like, sense well then it's like okay well then why is it that that you can explain a whole lot of the phenomena that we observe based upon you know, places of origin or race or whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. It's 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 because of 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 fitness to an environment, and there are certain things that right. you know, like good luck. Oh man, how how many? All right, watch the Olympic Games that aren't the Winter Olympic. Watch the Summer Olympic Games. Yeah, I was about to I was about to say this. It's like, like not. If you look at like or watch maybe pro basketball or something like that. No, yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, mm, 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 mm. no, mm, mm, no, different, different, no, different. No. Co co well, okay, I'll, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying this is a completely good one. I'm just like, good luck watching. Okay. Just I go put me this. on a basketball court. Go on. You, 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 <laughs> you want a comedy show? Just put me on a basketball court. Yeah. Well, right. Exactly. And and. And you're, and, it's like somebody you know, with with more fast twitch fibers, somebody who's yeah, taller, somebody who's stronger, right. somebody who's more fit, more flexible. Yeah. All, all, I mean, how in the world? How in the world am I supposed to compete? Right. Right. And, and then you think uh, and about. I, you're I was like, just well, thinking like uh, I'm thinking like the 100 meter finals. <laughs> yeah. Look at the 100 meter finals. What what do you have? There are certain traits that are selected for, and and and, yeah, and exactly. ultimately, now that you wind up having. A world where people can generally travel from A to B, then we wind up inventing all these new environments for ourselves that we're going to wind up having to be 
yeah, fit selected in. For, yeah. So, so, so selected for it. So we wind up being like, okay, yeah, well, I'll get married to this person. And, you know, we're going to pop out our kids and they're going to be something like that. And he'll get married to her and she'll get married to him or whatever. And, 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 yeah. these, and these people are going to be, you know, have, having their children. And we're going to wind up getting a collection of many traits of fitness to many environments and see what happens to be fit here. And then, you know, maybe in a few thousand yeah, years, exactly. humanity the, will in, in the, look a little different, maybe have different same skill, di di different sets of, of, of predispositions to, 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 to certain kinds of skills or whatever. But, but, but by and large, I'm thinking that, you know, the, the biggest thing that makes us human, you know, our ability to, 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 to reason at a different level, that's going to probably remain pretty unchanged. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, it's one thing that, like, you know, this is what people succumbed to, especially in the past, um, where they, they looked at kind of statistical, they looked at statistical information about, I'm necessarily, not even, it's, it's the thing is, it's not, like, race, so to speak. It's literally, like, like, ancest, like, ancestral, ancestral, well, well, that that like, is by definition, or that yeah. th that is what they defined as race, right? Well, but, yeah. Well, but, but, like, but the whole thing is, 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 as soon as you use the word race, people go and give and get all the wrong ideas. Yeah. Where, where, well, yeah. Whereas all we are really talking about is evolutionary well, and, fitness to a particular well, things, environment. Well, and things. Some, I mean, people will equate like skin color to race, right? Which is like, well, no, it doesn't. No. Maybe. Someone that might there, give you there, a are, there are correlations, but then ultimately, right? There, there, well, that'll there are give many you maybe a things, sense so. of of where they were, like what latitude they're on, right? But but the, but basically, like it, it, so, yeah, like but yeah, you also so have we'll bone structure. You you have bone structure. You yeah. have uh, alveolar structure, which good. Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. You can't even do that with a spirometer. You need to go and like do do an autopsy or something. Yeah, uh, and yeah, like so, you know, vascular see, uh, vascularization. Uh, yeah different uh proportions of gray and white matter in different parts of the brain which are partially genetic and partially environmental um, yeah and, and and like you'll see you'll and and, 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 and but, but, thing. But, oh, do, you, do you mind if i if i if i address one thing that they're saying in the chat yeah go go you go it has first. to do with the genetic versus environmental basis of of, of, of intelligence right the genetics are a long-term reflection of the environment fitness to an environment i'm not talking about one generation of people move somewhere yeah that would exactly be epigenetics right. but but multiple generations of existing in a particular environment yeah like don't go twisting my words ar around when i say adaptation uh, or evolutionary adaptation to an environment that means more people survive and reproduce that are fit to the environment yeah. Yeah, and then the those genes, genes get passed around, around yeah. as opposed to the genes that whose results are not so fit to an environment and that's why i think that one of our biggest responsibilities as human beings is have as many kids as you can and then just kind of let things happen well yeah and and yeah and so like like People will look at yeah, and versus look case at, selection too, but that's something else. They'll, they'll look at statistics, um, and they'll look at and they, there's this there's this you know kind of interesting, well silly. It's just the silly like oh, you know, there when people say everyone is equal, they they mean different things. Like when if I say everyone is equal, I mean in a moral sense, everyone deserves you know, everyone by by default has equal you know equal standing now someone can mess up their standing if they do something like you know kill someone um w you know with with no good reason right like out of malice or just you know that sort of thing can like in my opinion it kind of affect you like you get what you you get what you deserve sort of thing and and but when, when other people say everyone's equal they mean in every literal sense right uh, sometimes they mean like in, in every single way which is obviously not the case when people have different environments um, and you know, you you watch um, you watch the NBA, right? And and someone might be like, well, you know, blah blah blah. You, you know, they might say something something kind of racist, right? But it's like, well, if you look at the people in the NBA and you and you look, okay, what sort of what sort of traits are good for for someone to be, you know, a pro basketball player? Well, let's see, speed, strength, um, coordination, those sorts of things. What sort of environment? And then we look, what sort of environment? 
what sort of like you know environment that's not basketball but in like you know where you grow up what sort of environment are those traits very important and then you'll find okay well someone who lived on the plains and had to chase after animals um what you know and be fast and 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 work with a team and etc those you know that's someone with those traits um it would be fitter and they'd be better to pass you know pass on their genes and and so naturally those traits emerge you know it's it's us adapting to our environment over time and and what's what's funny is people will do you know they'll do the thing where they'll say oh these statistics are wrong blah 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 this that you know some sort of denial they're like they, they'll emotionally load statistics and here's the thing is the diversity of 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 humans from different parts of the world is really really good like it's a really good thing that different people are specialized for different things in economics the the idea of specialization the idea of specialization um and especially it's especially wonderful in the world we're in where um where we're becoming more it's becoming more and more global right so more, you know people are linked together in more and more ways so that means when a problem comes up for the for the human or humans as a race um we have a larger toolbox we have we have people who are really good at this we have different people who are really good at this we have more diversity we're more prepared for different situations that would arise so broad diversity across populations across races different trends in within different races that's a good thing it's good that you know we have have these different traits it's it's not something that should be you know it should not be something that you should equate something moral from like for example when you you know if you pick some if you pick people like like the people who say like do the IQ thing where they're like oh well look look this look look I like look it's like oh look at you know Jewish people look at their you know 115 average for the Ashkenazi you know you know if someone was to say oh that means they're you know they're superior they're morally worth more that would be fallacious right like i don't look at okay i don't i don't see the kid i don't see the kid who's the top of the math class and the kid in the bottom class and say okay well this one this kid deserves rights and the other one doesn't that doesn't make any sense um and 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 morally we should all be cons we should all have the you know a fair shot we should all have be considered it, this is all my opinion as well um so take it how you will but uh, you know i think we should all be considered in the same vein because it's just it, it doesn't make sense to to, to not but but uh, but I think diversity of, of both thought and 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 physical diversity diversity are good things for like people, right? It's good to have this nice variance. So that means when problems arise, we have a larger toolbox. We have more, you know, you know, it's just better, right? Like <laughs> I don't know, I don't know mm -hmm. how else to say it. So when uh, you know, as as for example, Thomas West, his if you look at, the, I think it's probably still pinned as Quora answer. It's just one of the best answers I've ever seen on Quora. Um, and he talks about how within native populations, you know, if there's great tragedy, more empaths are born. You know, if there's stability and they need and, 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 and the population is expanding, they need more architects or people with, you know, people with kind of autistic traits with with the need to be exact and precise and stuff like that. And that their take in, in his take and the native populations attitude towards neuro, neurodiversity. Um, and in this case, it's it's a, it's applying to both neurodiversity and and physical diversity. But. Uh, it's good it's really good like we should embrace that we should embrace that you know different d different types of people are better at different things and and i don't know i it's it should never be seen as a threat or it should never be used as some sort of moral like oh you know some sort of you know inspiration for eugenics or cult the culling or genocide or any of those pretty awful things um in my that but that's just my opinion um and it's it's obviously a very taboo subject. This is a you know a kind of a, it's a sacred cow, right? Like it's this is something that, um, especially in our you know in, in our in the you know in the environment we are politically, this sort of thing is like it can be thrown about kind of frivolously, and 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 and, and it's just it's it, it's you know it's genetics and option. It's our it's it's. You know the shit that Darwin was talking about and seeing. It's 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 how people you know respond to different environments. And the thing is, the environment isn't constant. We don't we don't know oh, there could be any yeah, yeah. change in the environment tomorrow. We might not know. But by having a diverse array of people, we as a species we increase our chance of survival. Like that's just 
in my opinion, that's that's the case. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I don't know anything about that map, but that's like it's just it being. I don't know. Diversity is a good thing. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be something that's like like it shouldn't be something that's looked upon negatively, and it shouldn't be something that's like okay, like ignored, right? It should be something that's celebrated. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna read the comments now. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> Where do I put my penis? And yes, yeah. There we are. So now we've been. So now we've gone through a little bit of. Oh. Uh, news flash. Uh, were were we talking about um. The effects of a kick to the groin or in a previous stream. The effects of a kick. I don't know if we were talking about that in that stream. I can't remember. The effects of a kick to the groin. Oh, yeah. Like, like, I don't does, 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 does get, is like, does getting kicked in the balls hurt? Or were we talking about that during stream or was no, that off stream? I, I don't think so. I don't think we talked about that during stream. It does hurt. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, if we I didn't talk that, about that during that, stream, isn't, then... Isn't that probably <laughs> your body saying it? What? Isn't that, isn't that probably your body saying, hey, those are important, don't... Exactly, don't exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I wish that I could go and, and talk on stream about what the, 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 the connection... There, there was a very sick and twisted connection that I had that made it to... You know, talking about a kick to the balls, but <laughs> I can't go talk about it otherwise. I can't talk about it on stream. I'll get banned. <laughs> I'll need to age restrict this one too. Oh man! But yeah. It's it's uh, this is one of those really like contentious politically sort of topics, right? I'm gonna kick to the For, balls. Like, no, no, what we've been dis <laughs> like stus discussing, you know. Well, you it's, know, be in the, it's in because the chat. people don't allow them. People don't um, allow themselves to be constrained merely by the empirical evidence. You know, they, they they don't leave the discussion at that they start trying to impute yeah other right. things that don't need to be imputed to the discussion right like when when anyone brings oh more like any sort of moral worth into any of this stuff like that's just so wrong like no 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 don't do that don't do that no no like it's like stop please well i think that a lot of it has to do with intellectual honesty it's like well are, are we going to say that somebody adapted to X environment versus adapted to Y environment should be adapted to our environment? Because ultimately, our environment has cause and effect so far removed from each other that the, that the adaptation to this environment literally means being able to figure out how best to siphon resources using the power of the government. That's ultimately what makes people fit to reproduce in today's environment, and I don't particularly like that. But that is no. that is reality, you know. Ult ultimately, it's an unsustainable reality, and then it'll wind up having to go back to who winds up producing the most. But, but, um, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't change that adaptation to reality as it currently is. Uh, is maybe not necessarily from a genetic, perhaps an epigenetic standpoint. 
um, taking place, but, but, but definitely people have a different mental attitude toward life now than they did in times that were more scarce. Yeah. Um, um, I was talking, I had, I had a short discussion with Shulamit uh, Wadowski. Um, and she said and we're it's pretty much in an anti-intellectual um, like age even 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 though we're in an advanced age she said that um, because there's all this pressure I, I, I she didn't say because but she had basically kind of implied that there's because there's all this pressure like for people to kind of be I guess equal in like every respect like a, a quality of outcome that sort of thing and, and um and just in general like you know like she's like she's, look at you know look at the discussion on global warming stuff like that um she said she, you know she said uh, you know she got uh, like that some guy some some guy he was high up in the government um you know and he had an intellectual position you know he would get in trouble like people would get mad at him for using certain words or they would be upset that he used and this is someone who's like you know, like pretty high up there and someone who like has power, people below him would be like, why are you using that word? Like, why are you using those words and stuff like that? And, and she said she got, you know, she got, she got, you know, flack for using the word concomitantly, um, from, from people like, you know, yeah, from people and stuff like that. And so he's like, it's like an anti-intellectual age. And that's why, and that's what she, uh, basically she's like, well, that's why there's not, you know, that's why they're, they're not coming up with some, knew t she knew someone who was like originally involved in the creation of the sp5 but mm. and she said that those creators they were firmly convinced that there was no like, iq over 150 didn't exist um and that's why there's no you know um test she's like that's why these days there's no like there's nothing coming in along and replacing the lm like that's going to take a while a long time before they come up with something well, they're that, not going that, to do it because it's not it doesn't fit the narrative yeah yeah pretty much um, and it's it's shitty, right? Like that's <laughs> that's not good for for anyone, I don't think. Um, maybe, yeah, I don't. Not really good for anyone. Um, there's maybe exceptions, but for the most part, it's like it's a loss, right? Um, and yeah, she's just like yeah, it's like an, an intellectual age, um, which is interesting to me. Well, here's I the wonder, thing: what happens when what happens when the people who are smart they're like okay we're just going to go off and we have a big enough numbers to go and make our own society yeah right then yeah, what, then what exactly. happens so 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 ultimately you know anti-intellectualism can only exist for so long because you know we have all of our great toys and so on and if nobody knows how they work yeah, exactly. Then well, I think, the great I think toys it, go away. It stems basically, I think, it's this notion of like equality of outcome that's really pushing pushing this sort of narrative um, forward, um, and like people have to be equal in, in like every single way, right? It's like you know, uh, it's like getting excessive, right? It's it's it's, it's yeah, I, that's what I'd say because it's. You know, there's this expected outcome. There's this expected path of things. So when you deviate from that in a way that seems like a, sh you know, maybe a shortcut to some, or maybe, et cetera, they look at upon that negatively. They're like, well, why? What did that person do to deserve that? You know, and stuff. You know, people put these moral questions on simple, different. Like again, they're imputing things in a, in a silly way. And yeah, um, I think that's like the the real thing. Is like, I think any. I, th I think any intellectual sort of aspect is literally just derived from like this push towards equality of outcome. Uh, I would say uh, that's at least a very a good a good portion. That's just my initial guess, though. This is my intuition. It's it's very, this is very a uh, very undeveloped um, idea, and and I, and I haven't like thought about it a lot. But yeah, that's sort of. Which sucks, and that that implies denying de denying de diversity and sort of undermining it, and 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 then not you know 
not celebrating it <laughs> as some as something it should be. Like it's good as a pot, you know. As I said, it's good as a population to be diverse. There's a, there's a reason even why why men are, show more genetic diversity. At least, okay, I think this is right. Tell me if this is right or wrong. I'm pretty sure men have more like a little bit more genetic diversity than women do. Little, at least a little bit. And depending on the trait you're looking at, there'll be like a lot more diversity. Um, from from what I've from what I've heard. So this is all from what I've heard. This could be wrong. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, but you know, like women are kind of like they're like the people. They're they're the they are you know the population that decides which you know what gen genes get passed on. Right? They're like they predominantly kind of like yes, a, they're judges. Yeah. Uh, you go into the you go into the the supermarket and you look at the shelves and you're like I like that one. This seems really I like that because it tastes good, right? Or something like that. Or you know, they're like hey, this this guy's he's strong, he's smart, he's he's got all these good traits. I like that one. They they decide how the genes get passed on. Um, so, and, and and because they are they are you know they're the one who has to carry the baby. They're the one who, generally who does most of the child ra raising the child stuff like that. For women, for 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 them to have a ton of genetic variants could be, you know, really, could be deleterious. It could it could end up with, you know, unstable outcomes and stuff like that. While they, while when there's while when there's a ton when there's diversity among men, that just means a, a bigger supermarket. It's like Walmart versus the dollar store. Mm -hmm. So then they can get really the best trait they want and and you know and pass it on. Mm -hmm. And, and and so that's that kind of as I understand it how how that uh, relationship functions. Very yep. That's very um. It's a very astute observation. I will let you know that it has now gotten to the point where I really do need to go uh, because there there are other things that need to happen. It's already seven o'clock in the morning okay. my time. So All right. on that note. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for watching the stream. I'll look forward yep. to then seeing you tomorrow at the same time.